before, but it's worth mentioning again, I'm really grateful for this church and the amount of men that are in it that take their time to study, to help preach for when pastor is a way uh, that we can hear the truth. And so Brother Chance is going to come and preach for us tonight. Um, for those of you, you might be familiar with him. He sits usually up here. You, you see the back of his head reflecting a little bit. Um, I'm one to speak as it's coming closer in my days. But he is a recent graduate from the Central Texas School of the Bible. And so we, I'm glad to hear what he has for us tonight. Funny he said that about the back of my head. I got my hair cut just for tonight. What are y'all laughing about? Y'all don't like my haircut? I don't understand. John chapter 11. John chapter 11. I agree with him. I, I, I sincerely believe that we have some of the best men to fill in and preach in, in the country here at this church. Amen? I believe we got some of the best women in the country that preach here at this church. I'm just kidding. The only, the only woman, woman preacher I listen to is Joel Osteen. It's okay. Yeah. Y'all all right? You sure? Y'all act like you're nervous. I'm the one doing all the work up here. John chapter 11, verses 1 through 6 is going to be our concentration that we're going to look on. Amen. Some of you think, man, I don't know what are you doing up there? And I don't I don't I don't either. It might be my last time. Amen. Preach, yeah. Preach, now, uh, I've already made an impact before I even got up here when uh, Brother Person found out I was preaching this morning he said he spent all day praying that something would change. And I ain't preached yet, and he's got right with God. Amen. That's pretty good. Y'all sure you're all right? Amen. Because we're going to preach here in a minute, and it won't be quite as funny. No, I'm just kidding. It would probably still be funny. John chapter 11. Why is God late? Why is God late? Is he ever late? In John chapter 11, verses... 1 through 6, we read a familiar story. Most of us know it. Maybe some of us don't. But it's one of my favorite stories in the Bible, so much that you can pull out of all of John chapter 11. And as you know, <clears throat> John chapter number 11 is about the uh, Lazarus and him being resurrected. Verse number 1 through Six, I'll read this and then give you a little introduction to what the thought is about. John chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore... His sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, the, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, The sickest, sickness is unto death, not un, is unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Verse 5, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. So we're talking about why is God late and just that thought, and is God ever late? And I came up on this when I was studying. It says everything is about timing. And that's true if you think about it. Everything is about timing. While some keep going and try to make the most of every situation as they go, others will wait until, wait until just the right time and then move because they know it's better to plan. Then they move once they've planned. 
consider these things. Think about this. An oak tree takes 40 years to mature. Food prepared in the kitchen and cooked in the conventional oven is a lot better than the microwave dinners. Amen to that. Even regardless of what the national survey says, uh, Chick-fil-A is still better than Kentucky Fried Chicken. It takes 5 to 20 years for a salt pearl to form. The longer the years, the better the pearl. You can build a barn in a day, but it takes months to build a beautiful home. Ferraris are a handmade workmanship by tradesmen. They're not made by a robotic assembly line like the common Ford, Chevy, or Toyota that is built in a day. Ferraris require three weeks to build or to hand build. A common car on average can be purchased around around twenty to forty thousand, but the Ferrari can be purchased for minimum one hundred and ninety two thousand. Sometimes things take some time to come together in our life. And when we're going in our daily walk and serving the Lord and going through our journey of life, sometimes it seems like nothing's happening. I don't know if you've ever been there. I've been there before where I was just going along uh, my journey of life and, and praying and seeking the Lord and it didn't really seem like anything was really happening. But it's even in those times that God may be working behind the scenes. And that thing that happened that slowed you down from getting to church tonight that may have prevented you from being in an accident and that promotion that you didn't get at work that would have been a disaster in your life that God arranged that you didn't know about and and all of the things that God does in our lives that, that we may never know that He did because He was doing it behind the scenes Uh, The point is, is God is never not working in our life, even when we don't see God working. God's timing is best, and He knows what He's doing, and He knows the right time to do it, and He knows what needs to be done when it needs to be done. Think of this. When the light turns green, and the car in front of you doesn't go, do you give them a love tap on the horn. Some of you would call it a love tap on the horn. Others like me, you sit on the horn. Amen. You know, if you want to make my mom mad, the worst thing you can do to her is honk your horn at her when she's sitting through a green light. Did you hear what I said? When she's sitting through a green light, the worst thing you can do is honk your horn at her. It makes her mad. But when you're sitting at a green light and the front of the car in front of you doesn't go, Patience is something you understand from the driver behind you, but it's not something you understand from the driver in front of you. You see, the driver in front of you who gets honked at thinks, man, I should have went. Just, give me just a minute. I'm getting going. But the person in the back car that's waiting on you to go is, hurry up and go! I've got to get somewhere. I've got to get there on time. Amen? I'm in a hurry, man. I can't, I can't get there. Uh, I've got something I've got to do. I didn't get up in time. And, and you're holding, I mean, all this stuff going through their mind. You, you understand what I mean? Uh, the car uh, that's in the front understands waiting on timing and waiting on the right time. And the car that's in the back just understands go. Well, we read in John chapter... 1, verse 1 through 6. And I want to give you some things through this. And, and I outlined the whole chapter. And, and uh, it's okay, Brother, Brother James. I'm not going to do the whole chapter tonight. I'm just going to do, uh, let's see how many verses there is. I probably only do about uh, 56 of them tonight. The last one we'll save till next time, verse 57. John chapter 11, verses 1 through uh, 6 we read. And first of all, I want you to see this, the problem. The problem. I I caught that, Brother Jeremiah. You had to look to see how many verses there was. The problem. Notice it says in verse 1, Now a certain man was sick, 
named Lazarus. You see, in the very first verse of John chapter number 11, we see that there's a problem. There was a man named Lazarus that was sick. And as we go through this this outline, I, I, I want you to try to do something. If you've never done it before, try and put yourself in the story. Because oftentimes we, we read through our Bible because we know we need to read through our Bible, Brother Lucas, and we check off the box because we know that day that we needed to read through our Bible, and, and so we, we checked it off because we read through our Bible. But, but sometimes it's beneficial as you read through the Bible to, to take and put yourself in the story and try to feel what them people that were there felt and try to go through uh, in your mind what they might have been going through and try to, in your mind, think what they might have been thinking. And so as we go through this outline, put your, try to put yourself in here and understand maybe what they might have felt. And, and in the very first verse, to start out John chapter number 11, we see that there is a problem. There was a certain man named Lazarus who was sick. And I want to say this, that, you know, to you, this just might be a sick man. This is just somebody else that maybe they have a cold or a, or a flu or a cough or something wrong with them. To you uh, and other people that, that were around and, and, and other people who read this account, to them this was just a certain man named Lazarus that was sick. But can I tell you tonight that to Mary and Martha, this was their brother. This wasn't just anybody. This wasn't somebody that that just come along that was a stranger to them that that needed a, a prayer for being sick. This was their brother. And I say that because a lot of times in life when we hear of somebody that has a problem, uh, we can be tempted to think, oh, that's not that big of a deal. Man, if I was there, I would do it this way and I would fix it and then there's nothing to worry about. But listen, it doesn't matter what the problem is. To somebody who has the problem, it's a big deal. No matter how small it might seem, no matter how how big it might seem, no matter how minute it might seem, no matter what the problem is, to the person who has the problem, it's a big deal. And to Mary and Martha, this wasn't just a certain man named Lazarus. This was their brother. I can tell you how many times in my life that I was driving along the road going somewhere and seen an accident on the side of the road and didn't think much about it. Uh, they'll survive and, or they won't survive. It's, it's just another accident. But can I tell you that eight years ago it wasn't just another accident to my family. It was their son. It was their brother. It was their nephew. It was their cousin. It was somebody that it was a real thing. Amen. So I'm saying all of that to say this, when somebody in their life has a problem, try to understand that even to you it might be small, but to them it's a big thing. It's a big problem. And this was a big problem. So you see the problem. Maybe tonight you have a problem in your life. Maybe tonight you have a financial problem. Maybe it seems like you're working more than you've ever worked before and you're far, falling farther behind than you've ever fell before and you're struggling more financially than you've ever struggled before. Uh, maybe tonight you have a problem. Maybe tonight you have an employment problem. Maybe tonight you have a problem you're trying to find a job and you've put in applications and you've done the footwork and you've done the research and You've done the resume fixing and you've done all of the things that you can do on your part no matter the calls you make and the applications you put in, you don't get called back. And tonight maybe you have an employment problem. Maybe you have a marriage problem tonight. Maybe the harder you try, the farther you pull apart. Maybe tonight you have a problem that it just seems like it can't get fixed, that the harder you try, the more you focus in on it, the more you ask God to fix it, the bigger of a mess things get. Maybe tonight you have a marriage problem. 
Maybe tonight you have an illness in your family that seems in no way that you'll ever get it fixed, that there's no way that it'll ever be cured. Maybe you've been battling it for a long time. Maybe it's a, a back pains, and maybe it's a leg pain, or maybe it's an arm pain, and it's something that's held you down for a while, and the more you pray about it, and the more doctors you see, it just doesn't go away. Maybe tonight you have a health or an illness problem. Maybe tonight you didn't get that promotion that you prayed about at work, that you knew you would get, that you knew was yours, and it would be the one promotion, Brother Micaiah, that would fix your life because you'd make more money, you'd be able to pay your bills, and you'd be able to do things that you could never do before, and you begged God for it, and you prayed to God for it, and you didn't get it. And tonight, you have, I got passed up from a, from a promotion problem. Maybe you got struggles. Maybe you got struggles with some sin that you've worked on for years and you've struggled with for, for years and you've read your Bible and you've prayed and you've tried to serve the Lord and you've tried to do things that would make that sin problem be easier to defeat, but still today you look and you're struggling with some sin problem. What I want you to see is that, that well, it doesn't matter what type it is, what kind it is, most of us in here tonight, tonight we have a problem. And some of us might be sitting here tonight thinking it's hopeless and thinking God's late. God's late. Man, I've prayed to God and I've done the right things and I've been reading the Bible and I've been doing the, the things I should be doing. I've been going to church and I've been reading good books and I've been listening to preaching and I've been reading uh, 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 good magazines and I've been praying and I've been doing all the things I should be doing. I've been listening to good godly music for a change and, and yet... God's just late because He's not moving in my life. He's not doing what I need Him to do because I have this problem. Listen, there was somebody starting out John chapter number 11 and that's maybe where you're at right now is verse 1 is you have a problem. You have a problem. But I want you to see number 2. Do you see number 2? Do you see the people? The The people. Notice what it says in verse 2. and well, we'll start at verse 1, 2, and 3. It says, Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus. One of the people was Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. So here you have Lazarus, you have Mary, and you have Martha. And notice what it says in verse 2 about Mary. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying unto the Lord, Behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. So I want you to notice the people. There was Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. I want you, if you will, hold your place in John 11 and, and look over to Luke chapter number 10. Just for a moment. Luke chapter number 10. And look at verse number 38. And we're talking about the people. We're talking about the people. You know, oftentimes when somebody is going through struggles in their life or they have problems in their life, people on the outside looking in sometimes get in their mind that they're having these problems because of some type of a sin issue or something that they've done wrong in their life. But I just want you to see about these people, that could not have been further from the truth. We had Mary, who was anointing the feet of Jesus with ointment. You'll, you'll see here in Luke chapter number uh, 10 where we're at that they were both doing something. Look, look at verse 38. It says, Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. Look at verse 39. And she had a sister called Mary which also sat at the Jesus' feet and heard his word. Does that sound to you like somebody who has a sin problem? 
Does that sound to you like somebody that doesn't love the Lord? Amen, does it? Does it sound to you like somebody that's having problems with, with loving and serving and doing something for the Lord? Look at verse 41. Or we'll go to verse, continue in verse 40. And it came to him, uh, and, yeah, verse 40. But Martha was cumbered about much serving. So you have Mary, who was at the feet of Jesus, listening to his word. And then you have Martha, who was the one who let him into her house. You know, there's a lot of us here tonight that wouldn't want the Lord in our house. There's a lot of us here tonight that would have to clean some things up before God got in our house. But what Martha did here was she opened his, her door to him. That doesn't sound to me like somebody that has a sin problem or a struggle or, or issue loving God. Amen? And then you had her, Mary, or Martha, who was busy serving. And then we, we won't go a lot in, more into that, but what I wanted you to see was Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet listening to His Word. Mary was the same one that was mentioned in John 11 and verse number 2 that was at the feet of Jesus anointing His feet with her tears and with ointment. An alabaster box of ointment that was, that was worth more than a day's labor in that time. What I'm trying to say is, is you got a woman, Mary, who was always at the feet of Jesus. And you had a, another woman, Martha, who opened her home up to Jesus with no problems and was always cumbered about serving Him. And then you had a man, Lazarus, who in verse number, uh, in verse number 3 of John 11, it says, Therefore his sister said unto him, saying, Lord, behold, thou whom thou lovest, is sick. So let's go through it again. You got, you got a woman that's always been found at the feet of Jesus, either listening to His Word, anointing His feet, cleaning His feet, and wiping His feet with her hair. You got another woman that's cumbered about with much serving. And then a man whom those who knew Him the most said, the man whom thou lovest. You know, it's, some, it's, it's not that big of a deal to get somebody we don't know very well to say, boy, Lord, the one you love. But this was his sisters who said, Lord, the one whom thou lovest. The people who were closest to Lazarus knew by the way he lived that God must love him. You, you with me? Man, it's easy for somebody I don't see but once every six months to say, that's a good man right there. It's another thing for a, a person I live with to say, that's a good man right there. I'm saying all this because I want you to, I want you to understand that these, and I use this term lightly, were good people. They loved God. They were at His feet. They were serving Him. And yet, there was a problem. I just I want you to understand tonight that just because you're doing right doesn't mean you're not going to face problems in life. Just because we're doing right and we're serving God and we're loving God and we're at His feet listening to His Word and we're cumbered about with much serving and them that are closest to us say, Man, God loves Him. It doesn't mean that there's not going to be times in our life that we need God to move and it seems like He's late. Just because we've got it together doesn't mean that God's just going to snap His finger and start moving when we start praying. Even in church people's lives, there's times that God doesn't move like we want Him to move. I don't know about you, but I'm preaching to me tonight too, amen? 
Man, this is something Brother Chance needs to get hold of too. That even though I might get up early in the morning and boy, I might make my to-do list and I have my time of prayer early in the morning. I have my time of, of checking things off and moving things around and reading this Word and praying for people. And man, I give everybody a day of the week that I'm going to pray for them that day. It doesn't mean that there's not going to be times that I just need God to do something and He's not doing it. Y'all okay? Man, it's all right every once in a while. I want to say, man, I need God here and I need Him to do something. But man, I just feel like He's late. I just feel like He's late. I mean, you had the problem. You had the people. But in chapter, I'm sorry, verse 3 of John 11, we see the prayer. We see the prayer. Isn't that good? I mean, isn't that just the way things should go in a Christian's life? Brother Frankie, isn't that the way things go in our life? If we got things together with the Lord, we have a problem. We love God as people. And then we pray. Isn't that what we are to do? Notice what it says in verse 3 of John 11. It says, Therefore his sisters sent unto him... Jesus saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. We had a problem. Tonight you say, I say we, some of us have problems. And absolutely, I mean, absolutely, if you're here in this room and you're here tonight and you don't have a problem, you will probably by the morning. It's Monday. Man. One of these days I'm going to preach a message called how to, have a, how to Have a Saturday Every Day. It starts by not going to work on Monday. Amen? That'd fix it. I mean, I, I think it would. Stay in bed. Ben, here, got to get my wrestling joke in here. Ben's watch WWE all day long. Amen? Man, that'd be how to have a Saturday every day. But since we can't do that, hey, we got a problem. Amen? That we as people, we love God. Doesn't seem like He's operating the way we want Him to. But nonetheless, we pray. We pray. And then we see number four. The purpose. The purpose. Look at verse number four. It says, When Jesus heard that... He said, this sickness is unto, not unto death. Listen to this. But for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal. I don't think he copyrighted it. I'm going to steal a point from uh, Brother Aaron Bibb that he did a while back on the, on the program that I have on Facebook. I mean, let me ask you a question. What is more important to us? To get our needs met or for God to get glory? Now I know we'll say, boy, amen, I want God to get glory, but go through, have a problem and need it fixed right then because it's uncomfortable. And then come back and say, oh my, my I'm just worried about God getting glory. Now, most of the time, we want our need mad. Because we're in a microwave society where we just want to push the button and out it pops. Man, we're in a society that it doesn't matter how bad the hamburger is, if we can go through the drive through and get it fast, we're okay with that. Amen? We don't want to go through suffering so that His purpose and His plan can be met. But sometimes, sometimes... God delays so that he can get some glory out of the situation. I'm going to say this far before I intended on saying it, but do you know God got more glory from resurrecting Lazarus than he could have ever gotten by restoring Lazarus' health? I mean, what's, what's bigger to you? Cure, curing a cold or bringing somebody back from the dead? 
Did y'all like how I did that? What's more important to you, curing the sniffles or bringing back somebody from the dead? Amen. Boy, God got some glory. And he said from the very beginning, he, he wasn't being deceitful, he wasn't playing trickery, he said from the very beginning, he said, hey, look, this is what's going to happen. This is not to the death. This is something I'm going to use to get myself glory. From the very beginning, he didn't just wake up and decide that. Number five. Number five. The postponement. The, pro, the postponement. In verse number 6, it says, When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, so he's got the news, he ran and got over there as fast as he could because of that man that he loved and just snapped his finger and Lazarus was healed. Hallelujah. Is that what it says? No, it says he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Now that's, that's, that's perplexing. Imagine if you put yourself in this story that you have a problem, that you love God. You're, as a people, we love God. We pray. Imagine how we would feel if we could find out somehow that before he did anything, the Lord waited two days. Because if you look in, if you look in Scripture... If you look in Matthew chapter 8, verse 13, just write that down. Do you know that Jesus healed the servant of a Roman centurion without the Roman centurion, without the servant being present? That tells me that the Lord could have just healed Lazarus right there on the spot. He didn't even have to go to Lazarus. But not only did he not just say the word and heal Lazarus, he stayed where he was at for two days. Amen? Let me give you number six. I only got this and one more. We're almost done. Number six, the perspective. The perspective. Verse number 32, look at it. We're skipping a few verses because time's sake. Look at verse number 32. It says, Then when Mary was come where Jesus was, now Jesus has gotten there. He's a little ways out and Mary runs to meet him. And when she got there and saw him, she fell down at his feet. You know, I kind of like that, Brother James. You know, that's three different times in just a very little study that Mary is at Jesus' feet. You know, you think maybe we could spend some more time at Jesus' feet? You think maybe we could spend less time on Netflix and more time at the feet of Jesus? You think maybe we could spend less time reading how to have a better attitude and how to have a better self-esteem and more time on how to, yes. the words of life, amen? Yes, sir. You, you think maybe that we could spend more time at the feet of Jesus like Mary did? I mean, as I studied this out, it just bum-fuzzled me. Every time you look up, Mary's at the feet of Jesus. Yeah. But notice what she says. She says, she was saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother has not died. Now, can we just talk and be transparent? How many times in our life have we said, God, if you would have just been there, And if you're being real or not and honest with yourself and honest with God, there's been some times in your life where you've had to say, God, if you would have just been there. I mean, we can get up and praise God and give, have testimony services and talk about how great God is last week when, when we won the lottery. I know, Dylan praised the lottery. That's where I got that from. But what, when he, what about when he doesn't save the marriage? And you said, God, if you'd just been there. What about 
when you didn't get that phone call that said he's going to make it. And you thought, God, if you had just been there. What about when you didn't have that baby? And you said, God, if you'd just been there. What about when you didn't get the promotion? And you said, God, if you would have just been there. You know, I call this the perspective because from Mary's perspective, God was late. The Lord was late. That's what she said. She said, man, Lord, if you would have just been here, if you'd have been here when, when I sent for you, when you'd have been here when I prayed, I wouldn't be in this mess. You see, here's what was happening, and and I, 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 there's, I'm not even going to take everything from this message. I don't have that kind of memory, Brother Dylan, but so I don't expect anybody to take all of this. But if you really got one thing, get this. You know, a lot of times we're looking for God to do something. We're even expecting God to do it. We're believing God to do it, and the way He does it. It's different than what we were looking for, and we miss it. We miss it. Man, the journey getting there could have been so great, Brother Matthew. It could have been amazing. I hate to just keep using it, but you know, six months, six months, eight months after I had my bad accident, I I looked up and I looked back on things that happened. And I said, and I and I began to think, you know, the greatest thing about this is is the part I missed. It's, it was the journey. Oh, because I mean, everybody praying, God heal them, God heal them, God do this in his life, God bring them through this. But I'm willing to bet that it wasn't until after all of it was over that that some of us didn't look back and say, man, you know what the real miracle was? It was when we got that phone call when we were about ready to quit. Yeah. You know, man, the real miracle? It was when Miss Stacy showed up and brought my mom some a snack out of the snack machine because my mom wouldn't eat anything because her son was dying. You know the real miracle? It was that night that my mom had gave up faith and Pastor Knight called. You know, you know what I, I, I missed? It was when it was that it was Brother Rick Reed. Some of you might know him, some of you may never heard of him, but that came by every every single day. And every single day, even though I didn't know what was really going on, I could remember in my mind thinking, I'm gonna talk to him this time. Tube down my throat, all this. I'm going to talk to him. This, I, I'm going, today's going to be the day I can talk back to that sucker when he talks to me. Maybe the real little miracle was Brother Andy giving me his antique football game that I could sit and play and try to beat. Listen, all I'm trying to say is sometimes it's we want God to do this big thing in our life, and we believe He can, and we're looking for Him to, and, and He doesn't. And in our mind, we say, man, God was late. If God would have just been there, when the whole time God was there. We just didn't see it because we were looking for something bigger and better that we thought. See the perspective. She said He was late. She said if you'd only been here. But I just want to remind you that throughout the book of John, there's seven I am statements. And you know what, Brother Frankie? Not one of the seven did Jesus say I was. He didn't say I was the light. He said, right now, when you're in the darkest hour of your night, I am the light. You know, he didn't say I was the bread. I will eventually be the bread. 
No, he said when you hunger, there's one thing that can fill your hunger where you'll never hunger again, and that's I am. I am that bread. He didn't say that he used to be the light of the world. He didn't say that he used to be the door. You know, there was a time that you could walk through Jesus Christ, the door, and you could go to heaven. No, he said, I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the vine. And before all that happened in, John, in Psalm 46, 1, he said, I am a very present help in trouble. You know what that means? Jesus is the very help of the hour. That means tonight that whatever the problem is, Jesus is right for it. And finally, and I'm done, number seven, we have the power, the power. It turned, it turned out, Brother Dylan, in John 11, in verse 40, the verses 43 through 44, God wasn't four days late. It turned out he was right on time. Because Mary, who was all... Man, I can't get over that tonight. If I don't get a hold of you, something's wrong with you. Mary, who was always at the feet of Jesus... And Martha, who was always cumbered about with much serving, seen something that I've never seen. Have you? Well, I mean, I know a lot. We've been resurrected spiritually when we got... I know all that, but has anybody ever seen somebody come up from the dead? They did. He wasn't late. You know, the Lord is the only person that can be four days late and still be right on time. I'm going to read this song to you and then, and then I'm going to be done. I just want you to think of this. This is a good song. It's, a, it's the lyrics of a song and it goes like this. The news came to Jesus. Please come fast. Lazarus is sick and without your help he will not last. Mary and Martha watched their brother die. They waited for Jesus. He did not come. And they wondered why. The death watch was over. Buried four days. Somebody said, he'll soon be here. The Lord's on his way. Martha ran to him, and then she cried, Lord, if you had been here, you could have healed him, and he'd still be alive. And let me just stop just real quick and, and put in there. You know, there's some of you to here tonight. Listen to me. There's some of you here tonight that you are still saying, if you had just been here, God, if you had just been here. You know that? I just feel it. Feel it in my spirit that there's, other, there's some of you that are here tonight that you can't be all that you could be for God because you're still saying, if you'd have just been here, God. But you're four days late and all hope is gone. Lord, we don't understand why you waited so long, but his way is God's way not yours or mine. And it isn't great, isn't it great, when he's four days late, he's still on time. Tonight, you have a problem. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter how small, it doesn't matter how big, you have, we have a problem. And tonight, we're the people of God. We love Him. He loves us. And we've prayed. We've prayed. But God's not moving the way we thought He would and that we expected Him to. But there's a purpose. There's a purpose. 
There's a plan. You know, God took a specific path to get Lazarus. There's a, there may be a postponement. There may be a postponement. Now, P.M. Yeah, Flair can go ahead and head up, and Pastor Bishop, you can head up here. There's a postponement. And maybe we have a perspective. God just didn't show up. God was late. But somewhere down here, listen to me, somewhere down here, there's going to be the power. You may not, it may not be, it may not even be while you're here on this earth, but there'll be a time when you look back and you say there was a power. There was a reason on what God did. Can I, this is what I would challenge you with, encourage you with today when, it, when you come up to the altar, when you pray. If you're one of those tonight that aren't where you could be with God because you're still saying, God, if you'd have been here, could tonight be the night you'd let that go? Could tonight just be the night that you say, man, God's got a plan. It's better than mine. He's smarter than me. He knows what he's doing. And somewhere in the future, there's going to be a power. Let's go and, let's go and pray. And as we pray, let's go and stand. Lord, we thank you for tonight. Lord, we thank you for this message. Lord, we thank you for your power. Lord, we thank you for all you've done in our lives, Lord. And we pray that as we go in this time of prayer, Lord, that we can trust you in your timing. Lord, we thank you again. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. As the piano plays, the altars open if you need it. Just thinking about that idea of timing.